Okay, in this video I want to introduce another mathematical function uh, called exponentials. Okay, so first of all you can write an exponential like this or just simply e. Actually that's poor like e. If you're using it this way it might be the exponential of x or this way it might be e to the x. Okay? So, well, I suppose the, the first question is, what is E? So I'm going to answer this by opening up my calculator. Pressing shift. Pressing the, the natural log button which gives me E. Giving it a power of 0. And pressing 0. Oh, sorry. E to, I get it giving it a power of 1, should I say. And I get that E is equal to... 2.71828 It's just a number. That's all that the exponential is. So the exponential is just a number. Now, why is it important? It's strange because the exponential actually is, you will see this particular number everywhere. It's it's, it's very strange. I don't understand why it is, but I, I don't know I don't know if there are, are, there, are there any people that understand why it is. But this number e is equal to 2.71828 appears everywhere it appears all over the world in physics sorry in science in in mathematics in you name it you know in business in um, finance it appears in all of them and the I suppose the the most the the thing is probably involved in most is called growth or R sorry growth and decay growth and decay. Now, the reason that is, it, you, you know, sometimes you would have heard the phrase exponential, x-p-o-n-e-n-t-i-a-l, growth. What does that mean? It means growth that looks like the graph of the exponential. So the question is, what does the graph of the exponential look like? So, how do we do this? How do we do the graph of the exponential? Okay, just let me think now, see if I can do this just offhand. I didn't prepare this, I probably should have. So, I'm going to start down here like this. And I'm going to say, just bear with me a moment, what's, um, the 10 is pretty big. Okay, so I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, actually, <laughs> I did that very badly, Try, go again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So, e to the naught is 1, and I'm going to say that's approximately 0, so I'm going to leave it down there. Then I go shift, log, e to the 1 is approximately 2.17 so that's approximately 0 down there e to the 2 is 7.38 still approximately 0 e to the 3 is equal to about 20 oh, yeah, it's, still, it's still pretty small e to the 4 54 put it there uh, actually, that's probably a bit unfair as well. E to the 5. 148. We're starting to register now. E to the 6. 403. E to the 7. 1096. E to the 8. 3,000. E to the 9. 8,000. Okay? Yeah, you can see that. Just about see that. So join those together. Like that. And that is the graph that y is equal to e to the x. Now, is there anything kind of strange about this graph? Well, absolutely there is. 
when x was 1, when x is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 even, I think that went up to like uh, 408, and this went up to 8000. So when e went between 0 and 5, is so 0 to 5, and we only increased, we'll say, a maximum of 408. But from 5 to 9, can you see that? You can't, sorry. But from 5 to 9, we went from 408 to 8,000. So we went up, we'll say, 7,500. Now, just as a matter of interest, what about if we put in e to the 20? e to the 20 is uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 thousand places. So it's, it's, it is 485 million. That's e to the 20. So we'll see between 10 and and 20, we went up to 485, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So the point is that as the exponential go, as the x gets bigger, then the jump in the corresponding y's gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So just one final one, if you're not convinced that this is a bit mad, we'll say e to the 50. e to the 50 e to the 50 is equal to 5.1 times 10 to 21. Now what does that mean? Okay, well 10 to the 6 is a million. So we have uh, 3 6's are 18. So it is a, a million, 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 and we're left over four, so that is uh, 10,000. So 10,000. So this number here is 10,000 million, million, million. So whereas between zero and five, we went up maybe to 408. 5 to 9 we end up to maybe 7,500. Between 10 and 20 we went up to about 485 million. At between 20 and 50 in the X we went to 10,000 million million million. That is an absolutely enormous number. It's ridiculous. I can't think of it. Like 10,000 million million million. That might... I, that is... Does, I can't even think of anything that, that could possibly be that large. So the point anyway is that this this number, E2.718, is a bit strange. It has this, this uh, property that it grows and grows and grows with only really small increases in the size of the corresponding x values. Similarly, if you wanted to turn it on its head, you could have something called exponential decay, which would look something like this. So it would stay level for a while, and then it would just plummet. Just absolutely plummet. Uh, for example, just to show, by the way, or to, to illustrate the fact that this isn't um, that we're not talking, uh, we're not talking something pie in the sky here. If you wanted to draw uh, oil prices, oil prices, we'll say between 1970 and uh, whatever 2000. It doesn't really matter. Look, I'm not looking up this data, but I know the curve all the same. So the oil prices, take a guess what sort of curve they're on. They're on an exponential curve. So what does that mean? Well, look, it, uh, they, and they always have been on an exponential curve. It means, and that, that's probably a pretty poor curve. I'll do that again. So that's probably, that's poor as well. Now, there is a better exponential curve. Okay, so the point is, oil prices, maybe for 30 or 40 last, we'll say 30 years or 20 years, they may have risen, you know, only a small bit, and then they will absolutely rocket they were absolutely rocket, which they have done. Because if you went and zoomed into this area here, like this, now while that is small in comparison to this, this could be easily 6 times 10 to the 21. This might here might be 6 times 10 to the 6, so that's a million. And down here we might have, uh, whatever, a thousand. And down here we might have one. So if I zoom into, the, say, this area here, what are we going to have? We're going to have the exact same thing. We're going to have another exponential curve that's going like this. Whereas this time up here might be 6 times 10 to the 6. And down here might be 1,000. So if we went and zoomed in on this area here, what would we get? 
where you get the exact same thing. You would get your graph, you'd get your exponential growth, this might be a thousand, this might be number one. So the point is anyway, exponential growth is obviously not a good thing. That means the growth is on an uncontrolled increase. Similarly, exponential decay is usually a bad thing. We usually don't want things to, exp it to decay exponentially. So, um, that is, that is what well, I say, uh, the main property of exponentials is that they, it's just a number. It, it, it happens everywhere. Like I said, our oil growth, or oil, well, the prices of oil uh, is on an exponential curve. Uh, so that help illustrates that this isn't this isn't airy fairy stuff. Now the other thing is that exponentials are the opposite to natural logarithms. Now I know I've done a video on natural logarithms. I'll just a quick kind of expan explanation on logarithms is that. If you were, we'll say, here's your exponential curve, right? I know that's a poor one, but like, say on this curve, we may have things like, we might have 10 to the 10, 10 to the 6, uh, 10 to the 1, 10 to the 0, right? Now, the point is, between here and here, there is, um, well, 10 to the 10 would be four zeros, so that's, uh, let me think, 10,000 times, in, it, there's 10,000 uh, time increase, this one here, there's a million, a million times increase. Here, there's a, a thousand times increase, or ten. No, that's only ten. But anyway, so the point is, the the increases are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And look, my graph is is to get anything bigger than that. Like if I wanted to look at something that was ten to the ten to the hundred, well, my graph wouldn't fit it. So instead of actually writing things with a scale that all that that stays constant, what people do is use a thing called logarithms. And log looks like this, it's ln, that's natural log. And uh, if you wanted a normal log, we'd have something like this, you write log. And you would have a base. And the base is, is essentially it, how much, uh, what sort of gap between um, figures. So for example, the gaps here are increasing, increasing, increasing. So you adjust the, log, you adjust the base on the log so they actually get very close together. But that doesn't mean anything. It means they're massively apart in, in size, but you can means you can graph them easily. And basically what we have here is that the natural log has got a base of E. So the natural log, uh, it's the base E um, of X equal to, what is that? The natural log of, we'll say the natural log of 1, I think that that is 0. The natural log of 0 is undefined as far as I know. Natural log. Oh, sorry, log of zero. Yeah, is undefined. That's what I thought. So anyway, the the point anyway is that um, natural log of we said one was zero. So that the whereas the log will contract things that are very big to close together, so you can look at them. That's why logs are used. Lots of graphs back in let's say 40, 50 years ago were logarithmic because we didn't have computers to do them. But now we don't really need them. So the logarithms will contract things close together while the exponential will pull things, they will stretch them further apart and the logarithm will bring them in. So they're opposites of each other. So say for example, say for example you did this, you might, you might have some like um, uh, e to the x is equal to 1. Now if, for example, for some reason you decided you want to take the natural log of both sides, like this, These two cancel, and you're just left with x is equal to the natural logarithm of 1 happens to be 0. But the point anyway is that the log and the exponential cancels. They're inverses of each other. Similarly, uh, the log, we'll say that's the log v, so e to the log of x is also equal to x because they just cancel. So the natural logarithm and the exponential are inverses or opposites of each other. The exponential is something mad. It has this crazy growth factor, and it's got a, it's got this crazy um, decay factor. Nothing to be scared of whatsoever. It's just a number. Um, and you know how the the logarithms work. Like so, you say ln and um, uh, exponential. They are inverses, and that means they cancel. Absolutely nothing to be afraid of there at all. Nothing, nothing mad whatsoever. Now, can I think of one last thing? Oh, yeah, what I didn't say was the, the, the graph of natural log, if I can remember. Um, I think the graph of natural log looks like this. 
so it has an asymptote at zero that's why if you put if you type in the natural log of zero is equal to it's it's not defined because look it, it goes it goes to infinity here it never actually reaches a number and this here that levels off so look in actual fact you can see this straight away so remember the exponential curve I'll just draw it here went something like this so it stayed level for a while and then skyrocketed this one skyrockets first and then levels off so that's then that's the natural log of x and this is e to the x so you can see the two of those are inverses so like I said absolutely no reason to be afraid of it it's something that's used uh, very much in in science and engineering and mathematics and business you name all those places it's there uh, it's the the opposite of a logarithm a natural logarithm not just and not a log it's not it's not the opposite of this it's the opposite of this one the natural logarithm and uh, look I hope that gives you an insight if you have any we'll say comments suggestions or questions please post them in the bottom of this, this video thank you for watching please subscribe to my channel and pass this on to your friends